Today we're looking at Apicure that was introduced by Homer Lachlan in 1955. It was designed by Don Schreckengost. It's a line of solid colored dinnerware. Uh, it came in four colors. We've got Snow White, Turquoise Blue, Dawn Pink, and Charcoal Gray. We're also going to look at Kenilworth, but not too much. And we'll see how this relates to the Epicure shape. Uh, this line was developed in 44 and, as I said, introduced in 55. So most of the pieces that you find are going to be marked 55. I looked at the ones um, that I have set out, and they range from February 55 to June of 1955. I couldn't find any other dates on, on my pieces. So let's begin by looking at the trade journal advertisement that introduced this shape from uh, February 1955. And it says, Homer Lachlan's newest and smartest dinnerware for casual dining. It's superb styling with texture glazes and charming colors of dawn pink, snow white, charcoal gray, and turquoise blue creates an incomparable table setting. Sturdy, multi-purpose, oven-proof, meeting Americans, I'm sorry, meeting America's demand for function and beauty at modest prices. Full color national advertising starting in May issues of leading consumer magazines will bring pre-sold customers to your store. Plan now to meet the demand with Epicure, the most salesworthy dinnerware 1955 will see. So we're going to talk more about this uh, advertising campaign in a moment. Uh, we have a couple of Epicure brochures. The outside and the inside. It folds into three sections. This is the full assortment. The only pieces not shown here are the tidbit tray, which is found in white, and the promotional little nut dish. And we see one here in turquoise with the Epicure baggie, and there's a brochure inside. And you can find them in the uh, pink. The pinks are not as common as turquoise. I've only seen one in charcoal gray, and I've never seen one in white. But here we see the standard assortment in the four colors. Uh, and this is a, a little order form, so you could... Uh, it has the prices for each piece, and then you could order what colors you want, and you could uh, use this to order from a retailer. And uh, this, you would fill it out. It says Epicure America's Smartest Casual Dinnerware. And this is an original sketch. Uh, Don Schreckengoss made several of these uh, in colored pencil. Uh, planning for this Epicure brochure, and we see uh, some color copies of other sketches he made. Uh, some more sketching. This shows the, uh, the exterior of the brochure. This is, is what he had planned out, and what he had planned out it resembles the finished product pretty well. Uh, buffet set. We're going to look at this in a moment. Um, this is a promotional advertisement that was drawn up. Uh, for a potential buffet set that really didn't happen. And another drawing for a potential uh, fold-out brochure. And this is a, a black and white color, I'm sorry, a black and white copy of uh, what the inside was going to look like. Again, it pretty much matches the, uh, the final version. And I wanted to show these. These are markings that didn't go into production for Epicure. We got the little oval one that says uh, Homer Lachlan at the top, Newell, West Virginia at the bottom, Epicure Ovenware, Oven Proof. And here's another one, uh, Oven Proof Epicure, Homer Lachlan, Newell, West Virginia. And this circle mark, uh, Epicure Oven Proof by Homer Lachlan, Newell, West Virginia. And we see uh, from January 5th, 1955, we see composition of sets and the scale prices that were uh, intended for each one. So that was all established before its introduction. This is a letter, or a copy of a letter, to the Vitratone Company of Chicago. And it's dated March 3rd, 1955. It's by Don Schreckengost, and he's talking about the brochures. And he's asking for a quote, um, let's see, he wanted one million to two million brochures. And he needed them in time for the April 15th uh, advertising campaign. Uh, it says here, 
we are attempting to meet the, a deadline and are trying to have finished folders and store counters by the 15th of April, which is the date of our national advertising of the wear. And uh, so that's, they only had like a month to work on this, a little over a month to create these brochures. And uh, we have the buffet set, which I've mentioned before. This is dated January 11th, 1956. Um, wanting to create these different types of sets for buffet wear. Uh, and the Epicure, and then it says drop 13056. So I don't think this ever went anywhere. But it's interesting to note that they've got um, the salad bowl. It says large 10 and 3 8. So I'm not exactly sure what that is. That may be a piece of Kenilworth, but I'm not 100% sure that's something I'm going to have to look up because the jumbo salad uh, made by Homer Lachlan is less than 10 inches. So it's not that one. So let's look more at that advertising campaign that was mentioned in the letter by Don Schreckengoss with respect to the brochures. Um, we have here three printouts of Epicure advertisements that appeared in magazines. Now the originals would be much larger but I didn't want to take up a bunch of table space. But these are the three that you will find. And you can find these on eBay uh, every once in a while. Someone will cut them out of a magazine from 55 and, and offer them for sale. So this campaign, let's see if we can find an article. Here we go. February 14th, 1955. And this printout of this article talks about the campaign. It says Epicure Line National Ad Campaign Set. Homer Lachlan's new Epicure Line will be featured in national consumer ads during 1955. It was made known. This is said to be the first time that Homer Lachlan has planned such an extensive publicity program. That's true. They, they really hadn't done this before. Even with Fiesta, they'd never done anything like this before. Now, they had done little advertisements in uh, various magazines around 1910. You know, it would say, look for the market. It would show the Homer Lachlan back stamp. Or it would say, you know, write in for the free China book, which is a little booklet pamphlet that describes pottery. Um, those would feature in their advertisements shapes like Hudson and Genesee and Angeles. But to promote something like this, a full line of dinnerware, um, yeah, Homer Lachlan had never done this before. Um, it says the firm has appointed Batten, Barton, Durstein, and Osborne, New York and Pittsburgh advertising agency, to handle the campaign. First color ads will appear in the May issues of Living, House Beautiful, Guide for the Bride, and Ladies Home Journal, which will be on the newsstands about mid-April. The program will continue throughout the year. At the same time, Homer Lachlan is preparing a three-page color folder. Now, that's the brochure. It's, a, it's divided into three sections, but it's just one page. For distribution at point of sale in stores. Mailing pieces introducing the Epicure line are also now being sent to all dealers. And then it goes on to talk a little bit about the shape. It says Epicure is oven proof multi-purpose casual line of dinnerware and serving pieces in four colors, snow white, dawn pink, turquoise blue, and charcoal gray. Items have a flanged edge, a flanged edge. Um, I call it a dropped edge, but flanged edge works as well. So I want to show you some of these mailings they were talking about. This is a copy of a memo from 1955, and it talks about seven different types of mailings. The first one says a reminder that the a reminder that there are profits waiting for you. So we have an example we can look at. This is what would have been mailed out. Make a little room here. And it starts off a reminder that there are profits waiting for you. You open it up and you have an Epicure advertisement. This would have been mailed to uh, dealers. And it says, remember Epicure at the Pittsburgh China and Glass Show? Of course you do. You haven't ordered yet. We'd like to take 30 seconds to refresh your memory on Epicure's new and different selling features. And it talks about the colors and it's oven proof and that it's modern design. It says, don't forget there's a heavy advertising program backing Epicure, full page, four color advertisements and House Beautiful, Living for Young Homemakers, Ladies Home Journal, and Guide for the Bride. The idea being that um, women would see these advertisements and then rush to the stores and demand to buy Epicure. So this is just one of the seven mailings that would have been sent out. Uh, the second one is says, Living for Young Homemakers letter. This was a one-page letter. I don't have an example of this one. Announcing the May advertisement. 
Uh, another one, House Beautiful Postcard, a black and white announcing the May advertisement. And we have one of those here to show. So on one side, you see House Beautiful, and then you would put your stamp and address here. And the message is, you know, Homer Lachlan Epicure. Hope you haven't forgotten Homer Lachlan's new Epicure line of casual dinnerware. And again, it promotes the line, as advertised in House Beautiful magazine. The next one is, Are You an Epicure? A jumbo postcard in pink, black, and white announcing Ladies Home Journal ad for May. I don't have one of those to show you. Her face launched a thousand ships. This is a nice little poster size. And it starts off, her face launched a thousand ships. And we open it up, and it says, hers has launched thousands of products. Um, an, the American woman's influence on retail sales gives her a power rivaling that of the fabul fabulous Helen of Troy, a nod of her head and a sale is made. A product is launched, a style is set. And it's talking about the advertisement in the Ladies Home Journal. And we know that. And then you open it up. And you have this Epicure uh, advertisement going on. This is one of the um, adverts that would appear in the uh, magazines. And it, it gives some statistics about... Uh, who, what kind of shopper reads the Ladies Home Journal. It says one out of every two of your women customers will read about Homer Lachlan's Epicure and Ladies Home Journal. And they've got the statistics here and it says out of uh, 10,331 10, women shoppers in 100 department stores, 51% said they read Ladies Home Journal. Therefore, they will see the, this Epicure ad and rush to your store and uh, you want to buy this dinnerware. Uh, be sure you are ready to take advantage of this national advertising. Have a complete stock of Epicure in all four colors. Display Epicure prominently in your Chinaware department. Feature Epicure in your own advertising. So, um, the sixth one is easels, and this is a counter display, and I don't have one of those to show you. And the seventh one, here's sales news, a four-fold colored reprint of the second advertising ad of the four magazines running uh, second advertisement. And we'll look at that one. And here it is. This is the mailer. Uh, here's sales news from the Homer Lachlan China Company of Newell, West Virginia. We open it up and it says this is the second advertisement of Homer Lachlan's Epicure that will run and it lists the magazines and when they're going to run. And it's encouraging you to buy it because you've got 6 million potential customers that are going to see the ad. And the inside shows the advertisement that we just saw before that would run in the magazines. So you've got all this promotion going on. And I'll admit I don't know much about advertising. But I can imagine that this cost a small fortune. Um, and it was never done with other dinnerware. And I don't think it's been really done since. Uh, with Homer Lachlan. So we'll set some of this out. Because this was not a hit. Um, it's saying that all these women are going to rush to the store and demand Epicure after they see all these advertisements. But Epicure does not sell well. It's a miss. And it's really nobody's fault. I mean, you can't predict this kind of thing, what's going to be a hit and what's going to be a miss. Uh, you just never really know. But they were banking on it being a hit. And this was Homer Lachlan's premier dinnerware line of 1955. But it just did not take off. Um, if we look, what else do we have here? This is from Better Homes and Gardens in November 1955. And they, they've got a little sampling of Epicure here. And it's just uh, Brighton Breakfast and Buffet Suppers with Epicure pattern. Dinnerware in pink, blue, charcoal, gray, or white. Use one color or mix. So it's just a little... Uh, advertisement and uh, again that's Better Homes and Gardens November 1955. But what we see towards the end of Epicure's run and this is where they're, they're, it's somewhat tragic to see this you know we're December 2nd 1958 and this is from newspapers.com and this is an advertisement uh, you come down to this store and you buy this range for $179.95 and they will give you Epicure so now it's reduced to a giveaway. Um, almost an implication here, well, it, we're going to give you this stuff that nobody else wants to buy. Uh, we see this before with Riviera, where it's rebranded as Juanita Ware as a giveaway, 
Um, but here they're just flat out calling Epicure. You know, 45 piece Epicure dinnerware with the purchase of this gas range. Again, your premier line of dinnerware with all this advertising and all this money and effort thrown at it. And here it is as a giveaway. Wednesday, August 26, 1959, this store is offering Epicure dinnerware, plates, salad plates, bread and butters, creamers and sugars, three cents to 29 cents. And before I started this video, uh, I did the math on these pieces and compared the prices from the original price list from 1955 to 1959, and these prices, three cents to 29 cents, are ridiculous. They're like 80 to 90 percent off what we see in the original assortment. And we have another one here, Epicure Dinnerware. This is uh, June 6, 1959, 16-piece uh, starter set, oven-to-table dinnerware in a discontinued pattern to add charm to your most elegant and casual meals, five bucks. Uh, again, uh, that's about half off of what it was initially offered just a few years prior. And here we see uh, J.J. Newberry. Uh, five and Dime Store. This is May 8th, 1958. Establishing prices for their selling of Epicure in all colors. Um, one thing of note, it does say that the ladles are in white only. It also has the individual casseroles, which are hard to find. So, um, yeah, now you've got a Five and Dime selling it in 1958. You know, three years after its introduction. Less than, well, yeah, about three years after its introduction. So, and there's nothing unusual about a five and dime selling Homer Lachlan wares. You know, Woolworths was one of Homer Lachlan's largest customers. But again, this issue that this was such a, a premier line of dinnerware with all this advertising thrown behind it and uh, all, the, all these mailers and everything that was done in the hopes that this was going to be a success. Now, we as collectors look at this and we consider it a work of art. Um, we don't think of this as a failure, but it really was. Uh, again, I have to stress, this is nobody's fault, really. It's just sometimes you can predict consumers' tastes, sometimes you cannot. Um, it's unfortunate that this was not a success. They would have expanded it probably in the buffet wear direction, because we're going to see that in a minute with Kenilworth. They may have expanded it with uh, new colors as well. Uh, there is one thing I will mention, because those of you who collect Epicure are going to know this already. Because if you look for plates, in particular, sometimes even platters, you'll notice they're scratched. And if they were heavily used, they are really scratched to the point that you, they're not even worth buying. You would just uh, throw them out. And in 1956, a year after its introduction, this is uh, Betchel, J Lust, and Joss. This was a major distributor for Homer Lachlan. And they're talking about... Uh, Recently, we have received several complaints from our customers to the effect that Epicure scratches very readily. In many cases, the wear is not sellable. Our purpose in writing you is not in the nature of a complaint, rather how we are to handle the condition. Because what they were doing was they were taking the scratched wear and then replacing it for free of charge, and it just was not working out. And the response is, well, when it comes to dark colors, particularly charcoal, it says, now we are sure that you've had these complaints on charcoal color, which is true. You see the charcoal gray scratch more than the others. It goes on to say, you know, we've had the same problem with Dark Blue Fiesta. So the idea of this Epicure is easily to scratch. This was known as soon as it was introduced, essentially. Um, but that is an issue that if you're going, if you don't collect this already and you're going to start, you're going to encounter scratches on Epicure, especially if it was heavily used. Just a couple of the pieces that we're showing here. This is uh, the creamer. We looked at the nut dishes. Uh, the coffee pots, rather hard to find. 10-inch dinner plates. This is the gravy, which would have come with a ladle. Uh, the sugar bowl. There's an individual casserole, which is an unusual piece to have in dinnerware. It's right there in the brochure. Uh, the way to tell it from the sugar bowl is that this is the only lidded piece that has a round lid. All the other lids are going to be oval. So your sugar bowl has an oval lid. The coffee pot does as well. There's your salt and pepper shakers. And here we have another Epicure coffee pot. This pattern is called Studio. Um, I believe it was 1956, it might have been 1957. This was an effort to try to revitalize uh, Epicure. Interestingly, it's marked 1955, so they had this uh, extra stock that they just decorated with this black and blue little intertwined design. Um, so you, you can find this, it, it's pretty rare. The only other pieces I've seen have, have been uh, the dinner plates and the platter. Um, 
one other thing, these Epicure coffee cups. This is done in Sky Tone Blue Clay. We've seen that before with Craft Blue and Sky Tone. And uh, the handles are done in white, and then it's given a clear glaze. I suspect that these were done for Woolworths, because a similar uh, thing was done with the large cups for Harlequin where they made a special Harlequin handle for the Epicure body. And here we're seeing the Epicure cups and a sky tone blue body, possibly for Craft Blue because Woolworths did sell Craft Blue, or it could have even been sky tone. I have no proof to say that these are Woolworths, but I suspect that they are. So that's a little bit about Epicure, and it's, uh, you know, it's, you know, again, it, it, it's somewhat tragic to think that uh, so much uh, effort was put into this line, and it just sort of fizzles out and, and becomes a giveaway or it becomes a five and dime uh, reduced price uh, line. It would be nice to go back in time and buy them at three cents a piece. But anyway, let's move on. We'll go to uh, Kenilworth real quick. And I'm going to cover Kenilworth because some of the glazes overlap with uh, Epicure. And we see this uh, coffee pitcher. Uh, it has the uh, Dawn Pink glaze. Uh, we also have the uh, coffee bottle in Dawn Pink, and we'll look at the Kenilworth back stamp. There's no mention of Homer Lachlan. There's no date code. It just says Kenilworth, USA. This was made for a specific customer, Jack Kleinman uh, of New York. And we have a little control sheet here for a treatment HLS-292 chips, which are the poker chips, which you can find on Kenilworth. And uh, we'll go real quickly through this assortment and we'll see how the, this particular pattern relates to Epicure as well because they're asking for the 10 and 3 8 inch salad bowl, which I believe that's what was the same one that was used in the uh, buffet set that was proposed for uh, Epicure that we looked at a moment ago. Cereal soups, which uh, are from Charm House. Casserole body, 8 and a quarter. That's this guy here. So it has a brass lid and a, uh, a warmer underneath. Uh, let's see, casserole body, eight and a quarter. Coffee bottles, those are the, the ones over here. You're going to find different handles on these coffee bottles um, and different lids as well. I prefer the little plastic lids with the corks. This black is not charcoal gray. That is the same black that was used for um, uh, Charm House uh, in the Duraprint lines. Then we've got Epicure 8-inch plates, Epicure 10-inch plates, coffee pot bodies, which is that's what we see here in pink, Sugar bodies, we have a sugar, well, and they're saying bodies, I need to point that out too, why they're saying bodies. Um, because they would have just sent the uh, pottery to Jack Kleiman, and then it would have been up to him to secure the brass fittings, the, the piece on the bottom, and these lids. So that would not have been done at Homer Lachlan. So sugar bodies, creams, that's what we see here with this uh, HLS 292 pattern. Oval platters, 15 inch, that's the oval platter for Kenilworth. It has sort of squared uh, sides to it. Turkey decal, you will find virtually every platter that was made in the 1950s by Homer Lachlan with a turkey decal on it. Uh, but that is Kenilworth. Ice buckets, I wish I had one of those to show you. That's a pretty rare piece. Uh, large covered casserole, small covered casserole, and fluted ashtrays. We'll be looking at fluted ashtrays later on with other dinnerware. Um, so you see there is this um, tie-in with uh, Kenilworth and Epicure, but we'll look at that more later on when we get into Kenilworth and once we're done with all this introductory phase of all these dinnerware shapes. And here's just a little advertisement showing uh, the coffee bottle with a warmer, a different handle. There's our casserole uh, with its brass lid and warmer. And we have this little set with the Charm House bowl, and these are little toothpick holders. And then a salad set. These would be plastic uh, spoon and fork. So that's going to be it for today. Um, yeah, Epicure and Kenilworth. Uh, next time we'll be looking at uh, Triumph and then Best China and then we can start on Vincent Broomhall. So that's going to be it for today.